Hi, this is John with Saw Cell Electrical School, and today we're going to go over why heaters fail on hot tubs. There's one primary reason we're going to go over that. Uh, there's a few more, and I'm just going to touch very briefly on that. But we have three heaters we're going to look at uh, in three different stages of failure, and um, let's uh, take a look at them. First, let's look at how a <clears throat> hot tub heater operates. Inside, you have a heating element. That's what actually heats the water. Now, it's connected by two electrodes. This is a ground lug, and this is a sensor hole. Most of the heaters, they have grounding lugs, and it's missing on uh, all three of these because I had to use them on the units I replaced them on. But the main cause of failure on hot tub heaters is not actually the inside element. Uh, it, it's extremely rare for that to be damaged in any way. But what it is is that you get a slight amount of water leakage that comes out of these electrodes and what happens is a small amount of iron oxide will go from the conductor to the grounding body of the heater now any voltage no matter how slight is going to pop the GFI because it's grounded right here now this is a very minor case uh, of heater failure I might also note that you can buy heating elements separately from this tube and save yourself about $75. Well, don't do that because there's no warranty. If you replace this heating element in this tube, no matter how good of a job you do, if it fails, the manufacturer will not warranty that heating element. Let's look at one that's a little worse okay here you can clearly see that there's a, a, a link between the electrode and the conductive outside container you see on both of these units this is smooth there's no leakage there all right and that's good okay both of these heaters were GFI protected and so basically as soon as there was any leakage uh, the smallest amount of rust popped that GFI now let's move on to a heater that was not GFI protected and you look here closely and you can actually see arcing okay and what that means is that um, first of all this heating element could have easily killed somebody very easily could have uh, fried them right in their spa because it was not GFI protected there was actually voltage going into the water unprotected now this had two effects on this heater. First of all, when you have electrified water, its characteristics change quite a bit. And you can see the sensing unit here has got rust around it. And what it did was when this water became energized with 240 volts, it compromised the seal of the sensing unit. It not only compromised the seal on the sensing unit, but it compromised the seal on the inline gasket. So when all was said and done, this heater was actually leaking from four different sources. The sensor, both electrodes, and the seal unit here. And the client that I replaced this for complained that they felt they were getting shocked. 
And I was actually extremely astounded that it was not GFI protected because that's one of the most serious code violations there are. And again, you see your grounding lug, which is absolutely worthless if it's not GFI protected. The number two cause is the element inside fails. Now, that is so rare that it really is not even worth mentioning. And the third reason, which is the second major cause of heater failure, is that your sensor unit shows that no water is flowing through your inline heater, which means that the brains of your spa will never let 240 go through here. Now, if you don't have any evidence of, of um, iron oxides built up around this, and you want to see if your heater unit is the cause of the GFI popping, that's very simple. You basically um, take these screws off, and this is with the unit powered down. You take a pair of needle nose pliers and you pull the electrodes off of these two stubs so that there's no connection. Now, if your GFI holds after you remove these two stubs, then you know that you have a bad heater unit. And that's one real quick test. Um, if your GFI still pops with your heater unit disengaged, then it's probably a motor problem or really hard to say. Uh, you're going to need a much more detailed investigation of what's going on. Heater failure is primarily caused by the electrodes failure to maintain a, a proper seal. When you replace a heater, uh, they're going to usually provide you with uh, two pieces of plastic to glue on, a collar, and also a rubber seal. Now I recommend you leave the plastic end alone, but you do use the new collar and the new seal. and. Basically, you, you snug that on. You use a silicone lubricant on this. You snug that on. You put everything together. You use Teflon tape when you put on your water sensor. You ground everything. And the very last thing you do is you put on your electrodes. And like I said, when you tighten them down, you make sure that the bottom lug is secured with a wrench or some type of, of pliers that will put no pressure on this epoxy bonding here. And then you, you don't have to be Hercules to tighten these up. Um, I use a product called Deox and I put it on here and you, they really only need to be snug because uh, there, there's no pressure or force on this. It just needs to be conductive. And that concludes today's lesson from Soft Cell Electrical on why heating units fail. Thanks and have a great day.